Okay, so I'm going to talk today about the GoPro Hero. I've got a GoPro Hero 3 Black. Um, it's a great camera. It has a big problem, like many of the others, especially the other GoPro Hero 3s, and it's a problem where the camera will not start or it freezes up. And what happens is that you put a battery in to the back. So if I open up the casing here, see I put a battery in. Now this battery has been fully charged. I have three batteries in total. The GoPro has been sitting there. I used it yesterday. And this happens very, very frequently. So I've charged these batteries. I've got an external charger here. And I charged it using this uh, five volt, one amp, uh, little mini transformer, the little just a little plug that you get on eBay, um, which is fine for the unit. It's fine for charging them. You put the batteries in here, and you charge them until the green light comes on. These are higher capacity batteries. Um, these are uh, 1600 mAh, but um, it came from eBay. But this is the stock battery. There's nothing wrong with it really. Um, it holds a voltage and um, it charges okay um, but having used the the GoPro and having charged these batteries in this external charger um, what happens when you put it back in so they're charged they're ready to go um, I popped the SD card out just for sake of argument put the battery in press on and what happens is it doesn't come on, but a red light comes on on the back there. See that red light? So um, nothing you can do really. <laughs> I mean, you can just keep doing it, but the red light will just keep coming on. It doesn't come on at the front. So all you have is a GoPro with a red light. Um, so then you try the other batteries. See, in case there's a battery problem, because it looks like that, doesn't it? Because this appears to mean. Um, that you don't have a sufficient charge in the battery, but you definitely do. When you put it in there, it's green, which means that it's fully charged. You can charge it again, <laughs> and it'll still do the same thing, and there's literally nothing you can do. People will say, press this button, that, but let's just try that. Press this button at the top, the shutter button, and then press the on button and hold it, and then put it in. I need to square that up. Shutter button, front button, push that in, what happens, see, still the same, still off, it's not working, and that'll just, nothing you can do, it'll keep like that forever, <laughs> and you can take these out and charge them again, so, what I've realised is, there is a way around this, and I've got what you'd call probably one of the worst cameras for this problem, the, uh, you know, some of them seem to come together again, if you take it out and put it back in several times, but most of them, I've seen dozens of videos on the internet because it's a great camera and you want to get it working but many 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 of them are, find this problem and you kind of move towards a solution from what you see GoPro saying on their site they seem to know what is going on and they don't talk about an external charger and I've worked out you can charge them in the external charger, but I've worked out basically what the, the rough issue is, and it's because of something that's going on inside the camera. It's no, forget the batteries, it's not a problem with the batteries. GoPro are dressing up like that a bit. So GoPro will dress it up like that a bit, um, suggesting that you know it's the battery that's the problem, and that um, if you charge it up, it'll be okay, and that's not the case. And I've realized really what is happening, and it's because there's something going on inside the camera um, that isn't right, either kind of to do with static or to do with the way it's, the, the, the components are working on the, the circuit board inside. And that is remedied by a charging process. You know, the, the battery is a kind of dumb battery, you know, it just... It's either charged or it's not. You could charge it in there or you could charge it in there. But if you put it in here and charge it, the red light comes on and during that process something goes right for the GoPro and it's the only way to do it. It's the only way to do it. You can keep these here. You can put this back in this. You can charge these up in here. You can put this through the charging process and then you can replace 
take one of these batteries and it'll suddenly start working because you put the GoPro itself through the charging process. Okay, now in order to do that, there are certain criteria that have to be met. So you plug it into the wall socket, make sure you're using one of these 5 amp, uh, what, sorry not 5 amp, 1 amp, 5 volt chargers. They look like this. And it'll say 5 volt, 1 amp on it. Don't use a big Aces one, it might say the same thing but it makes this thing make a funny noise and that doesn't sound healthy at all. Just, so just use one of the little mini ones, preferably the GoPro charger. So then you plug this in, take the SD card out, that seems to help. So you plug this in here, now the light might not come on. See sometimes that doesn't come on, especially if the camera is kind of hot or it's been used or something. Sometimes it doesn't come on but it's come on. The camera itself won't come on, I can press these all day and it won't come on, but the light has come on, which means ready to charge. So you take a battery, I'm taking the original GoPro one, and I'm putting it in there. See, there are the, the terminals at the top, terminals at the top. And you put it in. Now, no change here, the red light's still on. This is now charging. And what will happen is, it will get warm. We will leave that now for two and a half hours, right? You're not going to have to sit here through it, but I will leave that there for two and a half hours like that and I will come back in two and a half hours and that will be warm. If it's not warm, forget it. Something hasn't gone right. Pull it out and start again. It must be warm and it must end up warm like it's not boiling, but it's significantly warm. The first time I picked it up and it was warm, I thought it might have been breaking it. It's got automatic circuit shut down that will prevent that, I think. Stay with it. You don't want a lithium battery that's getting too warm. That's something that's going to create a fire and blow your house up but just watch it okay be around it for that two and a half hour do something in the background and just keep an eye on it but you will note it don't never unplug it and make sure the battery doesn't come out of the back that one sits really solidly these ones less so um, if I was using these ones I would put the cover back on just now I don't need it just now because that's not going to fall out so I will leave it like that for two and a half hours and come back and it'll be warm then I'll show you what we do next okay Okay, so I'm back. I'm ne back nearly two hours wait now, and I pick up the camera. It's still on charging. You don't leave it till the light goes off, because if the light goes off for some reason with that heat, maybe the battery discharges, and I think you'll have a dead battery at the end of that. You'll just need recharging again. So I've only left it for two hours. It's fairly moderate temperature here, but it's two hours. So I'm now going to just unplug it, and then. I don't turn it on, do not turn it on, just switch it over, take off the backing if you've got the backing, I don't, I just pull the battery out, battery out, it's off now obviously, no power, leave the battery beside it and we're going to leave them there for just, uh, leave them there for one and a half hours, just leave it, don't touch it, don't put it in, don't try and turn it on, it's warm to the touch. You know, if you first saw that, you might be concerned, but it's just warm to the touch. Um, it's quite a cool environment here. It's just moderate temperature. It's not warm. It's just modest temperature, about 20 degrees. So I'm just going to leave that for an hour and a half, and then we'll come back. Okay, so we're back. Uh, this is one and a half hours later, after we've taken the, the battery out of the camera, when they were both charging together with the red light on. And we simply take the battery again. You can feel it, it's cooled right down now. The battery's cooled right down as well, but they've gone through that charging process. So we put it in, making sure we're getting that right. Turn it on at the front. <whistles> click, click, click. And we look, and it's on. So that whole process is the only thing we can do, and that has solved it. And it works consistently now. That is the routine you have to go through to get this working. So I go now and I get a card. put my card in, you know, this is facing up towards me so the card goes in facing up towards me as well with the pins down, the contacts down, put it in and now we see actually it looks like it's full there because that was on for quite a while but what I do is I just top up the charge and it, once if the machine is on and that you don't know if you can see that but that will now, it now looks as if it's charging, that will make sure that the charge comes right up I've got these on eBay, 1600 mAh, and I don't think they are 1600 mAh. 
eBay's got a lot of that garbage going on. I think that's what happened there. But this is fantastic news for me. I actually got this camera for not very much money at all. Uh, <laughs> like 20 quid or something for a 300 pound camera. And it's just got that defect in it. So if you buy a camera on eBay that's a Hero 3 and you can go through this process, it seems to work every time. It's vaguely consistent with the advice that was imparted from GoPro. They said to do something like this, but they said just plug it in and wait till the light goes off. But I can tell you every time I do it and I let the light go off and they say that means that the battery is fully charged. For some reason it had discharged it, maybe something to do with the overheating had caused it to uh, discharge and discharging a lithium battery is actually really bad news. So that's what that's what's worked. Just to recap then, so you can't just put it in and turn it on. What you've got to do is you take the battery out, you plug it in, you plug the, the mains lead in with the battery out, um, sometimes it won't work. Sometimes you plug it in, nothing will happen. So just keep taking it out and putting it back in. Maybe wait five minutes. Um, especially if it's just going through a charge, it won't work. So you take it out and put it back in, take it out and put it and eventually the red light will come on in the front. If you just keep doing that, take it out, put it back in, the red light will come on in the front. Don't do what GoPro said, Don't. it doesn't work for me. Battery out, battery in, battery out. If it's not going to work with the battery, it's not going to work. You know, so you've got to go through this process. So you take the lead out, put the lead in, then the red light will come on. When the red light is on, you put the battery into the back and you leave it down there for two hours. After that time, the battery and the unit will both be r quite warm, not boiling, but really quite warm. The first time I saw it, I was quite disturbed by it, but it's okay. When that's happened, after two hours, you unplug it. It must be warm. If it's not warm, just start the whole thing again. It will not work unless it's got warm. Getting warm somehow fixes the circuit board inside. So you then take the lead out, take the battery out, leave the unit and the battery beside each other. The temperature here is moderate, it's about 18-20 degrees, I don't know if that helps, maybe it does. They then cool down, so the unit cools down with the battery beside it. Then you come back, you must wait, I waited for one and a half hours, come back, put the battery in and I put, uh, and I turned the unit on at the front and it came on and now I'm just boosting the charge up. And what I can do is, because this, once I've now used it, if the battery runs out, I now need to go through this whole process again. So some alternatives are to, after this, instead of just letting it run down and do it again, one alternative is just to use it while there's still some charge left. And that's probably easier if you use a backpack, which is a battery extension, or a Wasabi battery. These are 1600 off eBay's and I don't think they're that good. It, this this operation is a wee bit harder with them. But this operation that I've done, this works, has worked about the last 18 of the last 20 times, which is excellent because that gives me a working camera, which is a 300 pound camera and I got it for, you can get these if they're bust like that, you can probably get them for 60 quid on eBay, but they're not in fact bust, but you need to go through this rigmarole. Another alternative, especially if you're using it like I do on a quadcopter or on a plane, is to actually supply it with power while you are using it so that when you bring it back in it still has a charge and uh, then so you just got one of these little power packs they're about 10 pounds uh, 18 dollars or something and they just power it and they keep the battery going while the while it's in, in operation um, so you can keep an eye on that especially if the red light is flashing you can see how much of it is being how long it's being used for and then you can check to make sure there's some left um, and um, what you would think is then, well, well, maybe I can back in, I can just leave it on charge with it plugged in. That is not successful for me, actually, because if I leave it on charge and then go to bed thinking that I'll be able to use it the next day, it actually just overcharges. And but this sits on standby for quite a while. So the solution to that may well be just to leave a little battery charging device alongside it, giving it a weak charge. Uh, and just sitting there so that it's ready to use the next day and it keeps the battery topped up. I'll try that later in another video so subscribe and you'll be able to see that. I do know that um, for my large lithium batteries which power my quadcopter and the like, um, these three cell units, that the advice is not to do that because a small, what they call a trickle charge, is what allows the battery to become overcharged and it can blow up. But um, I haven't tried that yet, so I caution against that until I check it, but it seems like the only solution. Other than, just to repeat this entire process that I've done here, so you up in the morning before you're going to go skiing, um, you can just go ahead and do that. Um, 
an alternative. This would probably have worked with one of the batteries that had been charged in here, as long as, critically, as long as this GoPro had gone through the charging warming process, because it appears to be that the charging warming and then cool down, it will not work until it's cooled down. You can charge it and warm it and then just sit it there and then try it immediately and it won't work. It's just too hot. I don't know why. The heating maybe tells it not to turn on or something, but but for a battery that's and a, a unit that's probably got the biggest problems more than any GoPro you'll find, it's remarkable that this works consistently and obviously gives me a fantastic camera to use. And this will work fine outside. It'll work absolutely fine. Um, it'll work even longer, obviously, if I let this charge. Once this is fully charged, it'll let me know. Yeah, it has fully charged. I don't know if you can see that, but it says um, it's now showing the plug and the battery. So that means that I pull that out. And then I put the back on, like so. It's not going on. That's it in. It's clicked in. Um, and now I just I've got um, 19 minutes left, and it's on. I go through the modes actually. setting and it's on yeah, 1080p 60 I want it on 1080p 30 so I want to change the mode thirty exit exit and now it's set up it's got 29 minutes left that's uh, that's actually just telling you how much uh, memory is left in the SD card so it says 30 minutes at this setting so I'll just to show you just turn it on it's ready to record on video mode it's now recording it records absolutely fine I'll show you that later see you can see the camera there it's recording fine works okay stop that means it's written it to the SD card and just sits there on standby and uh, there's plenty of power left, that'll probably give me an hour's power and that's how you get a GoPro back again working. Any questions please comment, please remember to subscribe, um, like this video if you like it, please share it on Facebook or forums, please let people know because this is how you get a GoPro that has the red light of death working again. Okay and watch out for other videos if you subscribe I'll let you know um, how I get on with keeping the GoPro with charge in it uh, maybe with an external power source or keeping it going overnight so that I don't have to go through this process the next day. And you can maybe take it on a skiing holiday and have a GoPro in this condition working with you the whole time without having to go through this every day. But for me it's worked really well and that's after a lot of internet searching. And you can go and search as many YouTube videos as you want but I've never seen this explanation shown once. It's a vague variation on what GoPro were recommending, which is to stick that in when you've got the red light, chuck the battery in and then try and uh, pump it up. But ignore their advice to leave it on until the battery, until the light goes out, because that is wrong. Do it this way, follow my instructions, and this works 19, 18 out of 20 times. If it doesn't, just start again. But it's worked great for me, so good luck. And that's how you get your GoPro working again. Let me know what you think. Let me know if it's worked for you. Cheers, bye.